Hi, welcome to The Magic of Math, where we master math one video at a time. Today, my lesson is about what is a percent. Our objectives today are that you will identify percents from shaded illustrations, you will write percents as fractions and decimals, and you will compare percents, fractions, and decimals. The question I want you thinking about as I proceed through the lesson today is in a percent, what do the numerator and denominator represent? Here's the definition of a percent. A percent is a ratio that represents parts per 100. Here is a hundreds grid. You probably use this a lot in your early elementary years. It's a grid that is 10 by 10, making 100 squares. So it's a perfect representation for percent. Each one of these columns represents 10 of the squares. So we have 10, 20, 30, 40, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We have 47 parts of this illustration are shaded pink out of the 100. When we write that as a ratio, 47 are shaded out of the 100 that are there. So our whole and our part. When we write that as a percent, it's 47%. Sometimes my students say, this percent symbol, whoever made that, used the 100 to make it. Here's the one and the two zeros. So they write 47, and to replace the denominator of the 100 of the whole, they make the percent symbol. 0 0.47 is how you write 47 one hundredths. It's just written as a decimal as you pronounce it. 47 one hundredths. This is the one hundredths digit, which is equivalent to 47%. Your turn. I would like you to determine what percentage of this shape is shaded pink. Go ahead and pause. Come back when you're ready. Welcome back. So I hope you decided that there were 63 parts, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 entire columns, plus 1, 2, 3. So 63 parts of the whole 100 are shaded pink, giving us 63% of the illustration is shaded pink. Try this one. Write a percentage of the shape that is shaded pink. Go ahead and pause and come back when you're done. Welcome back. This one was a little trickier. We only have 10 squares in our illustration, and 8 of the parts out of the 10 parts are shaded. But a percent is out of 100. So when we write our ratio of what is shaded in this illustration, we get 8 out of 10. To write it as a percent, we're going to change this to be a number out of 100. If I multiply both the numerator and denominator by 10, then I have 80 out of 100. 80 one hundredths is equivalent to 8 tenths. They are equivalent ratios. Now I know how many parts out of 100, and I can write my percent. 8 tenths, is written as a decimal, is 0 0.8. 8 tenths, this is the tenths column. 80 one hundredths, written as a decimal, 0 0.80. 80 one hundredths. 0 0.8 and 0 0.80 are equivalent. Your turn. Determine what percentage of the shape is shaded pink. Go ahead and pause. Come back when you're done. Welcome back. So three of our ten parts are shaded. Three tenths to write it with a denominator of 100, we're going to multiply both the numerator and denominator by 10, giving us 30 one hundredths, or 30%. So we have 0 0.3, 3 tenths, 30 one hundredths, 30 hundredths, 30%. Now let's talk about writing a decimal as a percent when we don't have an illustration. To write a decimal as a percent, we either multiply the value by 100 or move the decimal point two places to the right. So here's an example. I'll do the first one with you. We have 0 0.08, which is red 8 one hundredths. 
When we go ahead and move the decimal two places to the right, the reason this works is to multiply by 100, we're going to do it two places because each digit represents 10. So times 10 times 10, and 10 times 10 is 100. So two moves move it 100. And that gives us 8%. That's 8 one hundredths or 8%. Your turn. I'd like you to do the next two. Pause, come back when you're ready. Welcome back. So I'm going to move the decimal point two places to the right and add a percent symbol. So 161%. Again, I'm going to move the decimal place two spaces to the right and add a percent symbol. So my percent is 7.5%. Think about sales tax or unit rate, but sales tax is a really good one, 7.5%. Write a percent as a decimal. To write a percent as a decimal, we're either going to divide the value by 100 or move the decimal point two places to the left. So here are three examples. I'm going to do the first one with you. So we're losing the percent symbol, which means we're going to move the decimal back. So we move the decimal here to add the percent. We're going to take away the decimal play, uh, percent symbol, and we're going to move the decimal to the left. So I'm going to physically move my decimal two places to the left, which means I need to add a zero, and it gives me 0 0.094. Now, this is to the thousandth digit. So it makes per, makes sense, because if I move this over, then it's 9.4%. Your turn. Go ahead and pause. Do the last two. Come back and hit play when you're done. Welcome back. So add our decimal point is right here. We're going to move it two places to the left, giving us 0 0.03, which makes sense. This is red, 3 one hundredths. 3 out of 100 is 3%. Here, noting that our percent, our decimal was here in our percent, move it two places to the left, and that makes it 2.25 as a decimal. 2 and 25 hundredths. Okay, now we're going to compare using less than, greater than, or equal to. And we're comparing one half to 50%. And we want to know if one half is less than, greater than, or equal to 50%. So to do this, what we want to do is to compare values. We want to write them in the same form first. So you have a choice. You can either write them both as decimals, or you can take one half and write it as a percent, or you could take the percent and write it as a fraction. Let's start with the one half. So one half. If I multiply both the numerator and the denominator by 50, gives us 50 over 100, which is equivalent to 50%. So we already can see that 1 half is equal to 50%. Or we could have said that 1 half was equal to 0 0.50, which if we move the decimal point two spaces to the right and add a percent symbol, it's 50%. So there you have it. It's equal. Your turn. Please pause the video now. Compare. Come back when you're ready. Welcome back. So I'm going to start with this one again. We have a decimal and a percent. I'm going to turn the decimal to a percent. So 0 0.37, I'm going to turn it to a percent by moving my decimal point two spaces to the right and adding the percent symbol. So 37% is greater than 3.7%. Your turn. Now you have four values, and I want you to order them from least to greatest. Go ahead and pause and come back and hit play when you're done. Welcome back. So I noticed first off that two of these are in decimal form. So I'm making the decision to order them. I'm going to make them all decimals. So four-fifths as a decimal, I could either do four divided by five, or I could find a denominator of 100. I'm going to multiply both by 20, which gives me 80 one hundredths. So 4 fifths as a decimal is 0 0.80. Already a decimal, let's write 8% as a decimal. So I'm going to move my decimal place two places to the left. So I go from the 
be after the 8, two places over giving me a decimal of 0 0.08, and this makes sense because this is read 8 one hundredths, 8%, and this is a decimal. So now let's come over here. So if I do these all, I have 4 fifths, which is a decimal of 0 0.80, and then I added a zero so that they all are two digits. So 0 0.7 is the same as 0 0.70. Then I have 0 0.08 and 0 0.45. So it says least to greatest. My smallest decimal here is 0 0.08. So I'm gonna list that one first and it was given to me. And then I'm going to list my next one, which is 45 hundredths. The next smallest, is 70 or 70 hundredths and then 80 hundredths. Now to answer the question I have to give it to the form that it was given to me. So 0 0.08 was the 8 percent so we're going to start with 8 percent as the smallest. 0 0.45 or 45 hundredths was given as decimal so I'm going to leave it. 0 0.70 was given as 0 0.7 and 0 0.80 was given as 4 fifths. So there we go. So here's our answer using the forms that we were given, but in order from least to greatest. So remember to compare values, put them all in the same form. You could have written these all as percents, or you could have written them all as fractions, and you would have gotten the same answer as I did. Thanks for joining me today and learning about what is a percent using illustrations, decimals, and fractions. And I hope you'll come back very soon where we continue to learn math one video at a time. If you haven't subscribed, I hope you'll do so now. Give me a thumbs up and don't forget to sign up for notifications. Have a great day.